Hey there, welcome. My name is Shauna McGrath. I am an astrologer based in California, and today I want to talk to you about trauma and the moon in astrology and how the moon can help us to understand the phenomenon of trauma and the moon in your birth chart can help you um, work with these things as well. Uh, that the moon in astrology in your birth chart especially can point to um, vulnerabilities, risk factors, as well as um, as well as areas of resilience or protective factors. Um, and I do want to say that this topic um, may feel therapeutic and psychological, but it is not therapy. I'm not a therapist. And I encourage you, if you're interested in this topic, to do some more research. And if you do feel that you would benefit from additional support, to seek that out from a licensed professional therapist. All right. Uh, so I was thinking about this because I was thinking about, I'm doing um, research for my um a project for my master's in counseling psychology um, degree that I'm in the process of and uh, thinking a lot about trauma and um, how we're around traumatic events, hearing about them constantly. And uh, so I wanted to, and I was thinking about the moon in the birth chart and how this is really the moon is such a beneficial symbol to understand and to work with and how it correlates to trauma and how it can help us find our sense of um, resilience, areas where um, we have protective factors and then also just kind of like understanding and making sense of our experiences as well, which I think can be very validating. Uh, so first, um, what is trauma? So I'll read to you a couple of def definitions of trauma and we'll talk about how that correlates to the moon. So uh, from a book called Trauma-Informed Treatment, The Restorative Approach by Patricia Wilcox. Um, this is on page seven. She defines trauma as a unique individual experience of an event or enduring conditions in which the individual's ability to integrate his or her emotional experience is overwhelmed and the individual experiences a threat of life, bodily integrity, or sanity. And this is on page seven of this book. Uh, so the, the thing that I really want to stress here is that um, trauma is an individual experience, so it's more about the individual's experience versus the external event, and that the individual is unable to integrate whatever the experience is, that the threat feels so um, dangerous, overwhelming, unsafe, and that person does not have the, the psychological capacity or the safety to integrate that experience or those ongoing conditions. And so, um, so a person can experience trauma without actually physically being in danger. So if someone sees a traumatic event or hears about a traumatic event even, and that event feels so horrible and overwhelming to them, they can experience a trauma. And again, this is very individual. And so what I think is so um, helpful with the moon in astrology is that it tells us about our individual, um, our individual temperament and makeup and capacity to be resilient against trauma and to, and how to work with our own individual um, capacity. Uh, so I wanna read one other um, section for you here. Um, so this is from The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. Excellent book, book if you're interested in this topic. Um, so he says, let's see. Um, Trauma results in a fundamental reorganization of the way mind and, mind and brain manage perceptions. It changes not only how we think and what we think about, but also our very capacity to think. 
Um, we have discovered that helping victims of trauma find the words to describe what has happened to them is profoundly meaningful, but it is usually not enough. Um, the act of telling the story doesn't necessarily alter the nervous system and hormonal responses of the bodies that remain hypervigilant. Um, for, for real change to take place, the body needs to learn that the danger has passed and to live in the reality of the present. Okay, so there was a lot there. Uh, so I was thinking how this so correlates to the moon because, um, so in this book, he uh, really talks about and um, explores how trauma affects the body and the brain. Like trauma literally changes your brain in the moment that it happens and then and then forward. Um, and the way to sort of um, heal that is not just through talking about it, it's through actually working with the body and the brain, um, the body and the mind connection to um, sort of like reset things so that there is a feeling of safety. And so this is very much about the moon in astrology. So the moon in your birth chart is connected to um, your instinct, your intuition, the way that you perceive the world. Um, it is a very subjective kind of seeing of reality. And it's all based on your early upbringing, your early holding environment, how you um, experienced your caregivers, the kind of unconscious messages that you received um, from zero to five years of age. And um, that, that imprint that that left on you is kind of like a filter that you carry with you and um, informs how you see the world. Your, it's your unconscious patterning, basically, um, your personal unconscious patterning. Um, it informs how you see the world, what you expect of the world, what you expect of people, how you um, expect people and situations and circumstances to respond to you. And then that informs how you approach the world. So, um, and so we can see this play out through the symbolic representation of your moon in the birth chart. So um, your moon sign, of course, but also the house that your moon is in, the phase of the moon that you were born under, um, and then aspects that the moon is making to other planets. So this tells us about um, symbolically what what your early holding environment was like and then how that carries forward but that also tells us about um where there may be risk factors or vulnerabilities psychologically um and then where there's protective factors as well and uh let's see what else did i want to say about that uh so what's cool is the moon is a symbol of the body mind connection so this is what is influenced and this is what we work with when we're working with trauma we work with the body mind connection um and so i wanted to read another section here so like what does that look like right uh so in the body keeps the score the author talks about how there's essentially two different pathways to work with trauma to heal trauma so one is working um, from the top down, working more with the analytical mind and trying to bring insight and awareness to what's happening. And then the other way is working from the bottom up, working more with the body and processing um, essentially non-verbally, more with the spatial and the physical sensations. So he explains this uh, saying that, um, Top-down regulation involves strengthening the capacity of the watchtower, the analytical part of the brain, to monitor your body's sensations. Mindfulness, meditation, and yoga can help with this. So that he's talking about um, using your analytical mind to become aware of what you're experiencing. Like, oh, like I'm experiencing tension in my chest, or I'm noticing that my breathing is getting... Um, you know, uh, shallow, etc. 
He goes on to say, bottom-up regulation involves recalibrating the nervous system. Um, we can access the nervous system through breath, movement, or touch. Breathing is one of the few body functions under both conscious and unconscious control. So breathing kind of goes um, through either of those pathways. Uh, so this um, working with the nervous system, with the body, that is so interesting because that is a way of processing and integrating and healing that you don't have to talk about it, think about it, you don't have to verbalize it. And this um, is anything that involves movement or rhythm, things like dance, um, and making music, drumming is a very popular phenomenon, um, and even things that involve um, games like bouncing a ball or something like that. Um, and then of course, breathing, as he mentioned. Um, and a part of this also uh, in this category is co-regulation. So this is where um, when you're around a person who is regulated and their nervous system is in a state of essentially calm and safety, you start to, to line up with that and regulate, which is really cool. Um, it's cool that that, that can happen. Uh, so, so the moon can kind of get us into either category because the moon is about our subconscious patterning and how that is brought into consciousness. So the moon kind of like walks in both worlds. Um, and the moon in your birth chart can tell you about the kinds of symbolic um, things that the kinds of symbolic activities that may be helpful for you. So for example, um, a person with, let's say, the moon in Gemini um, or the moon in Virgo, um, two signs that are ruled by Mercury, they may be more inclined to work more with, um, with mindfulness and becoming aware of physical sensation. Whereas a person who is, let's say, with their moon in Taurus or moon in Taurus, or I would even say like Moon and Scorpio, um, they may benefit more from working with the physical body um, and doing that regulation via physical movement or rhythm or um, dance or art um, or co-regulation. Um, a person with the Moon in the 12th house is probably going to need um, experiences that are very slow, very, um, very slow, very calm, and where there's a sense of, um, like hardcore safety, like really, really safe. Whereas a person with the moon in the seventh house, maybe they would benefit more from, um, from things like co-regulation and doing activities with another person where there's more of that relational emphasis. And so, so I wonder how this lands with you. Um, and I, I wanna also say that when we're thinking about this, we don't have to have experienced a trauma with a capital T in order to benefit from this because the moon is really just telling us um, how to regulate ourselves, how to find that sense of safety and security. Um, whether or not you feel that you experience that in your early upbringing, that's something that you can give to yourself now. And you can do that through working with the symbology of your moon, through understanding uh, what your personal moon um, like its own flavor, the, the symbolic um, amplifications of the sign and the house and um, the aspects, like what, what is it calling to you to embody in a more full and present way? I hope you enjoyed this. If you're interested in learning more about me or my work as an astrologer, you can find that on my website, shawnamcgrath.com. I do offer astrology readings and consultations, and I would love to work with you. 
I am wishing you a wonderful day, wishing you safety, health, and happiness. I'll talk to you soon.